Hello, this is Becca Michael. I'm going to talk through uh, the chapter four, selecting data from multiple tables, uh, and the exercise uh, that is at the end of chapter four. Uh, just want to talk through how you can get started on that and uh, what you need to know in order to select data from multiple tables. The database that you're using uh, from the book in the book exercises is AP and you download uh, you did it last week um, but you would download the create database uh, and create table statements from the publishers website and there's instructions in appendix B to do that if you didn't do it for last week uh, but here I have the AP database and the tables that are in in the database but I don't know how everything's related together. Um, so I can expand the tables and kind of look at the foreign keys and explore it separately. Or I can go to this database diagrams folder, which is a really nice feature in SQL Server Management Studio. So if I click on it, right click, and do a new database diagram, the first time I do that, it's going to ask me if I want to install the support objects. So I want to say yes. This installs that for me. And then I get to choose the tables. I want to select all the tables that are in this database because I want to see how they're related together. So I just shift click all of them and click add. Okay. I'm going to close this. And what it gives me is just a visual representation of the database. So you notice these two tables up here, they are not related to any of the other tables. They don't have any uh, lines between them. And here I have the foreign key relationships modeled out for me. So let's see if we can select all of these and pull these up. I'm going to pull this one over. So you can adjust this to make it look a little better for you. Uh, just so that you can see where these lines are going. So here I have invoice line items that's related to the GL accounts and the invoices table. Here I have the invoices table. This is a little confusing so I'm going to bring it up so you can see where these lines are going. Um, let's bring this up a little bit. Got terms. Whoa. Don't want to do that. Accidentally click on another item. There you go. So here I can see my keys. So invoice ID and invoice sequence have a little key next to them. If I look at the table here, invoice line items, if I expand it, <clears throat> here I see this primary key invoice line items and that's kind of confusing uh, because I don't know what that relates to. Here I have columns and so you can see these two columns here and these two columns here that's telling me that that's a uh, composite primary key using both of these columns as the unique key in this table. So it's just a, a nicer view. You can get to the data by expanding the folders in the table, um, but here I can see it all at once. So I would know uh, if I want to uh, get something out of the invoices table and I want to get information about a vendor for a given invoice record, that I can look at the vendor ID on the invoices table and the vendor ID and vendors to join those so that I can get all of the data uh, that I need. So if I want all of the information about an invoice, the invoice number, the invoice date, the invoice total, and the vendor name, I have to join these tables to get that information on vendor ID in order to get the vendor name for a given invoice. That's what we're doing when we're retrieving data out of multiple tables. So you want to find those foreign key relationships. 
if you download uh, the uh, information from the book, uh, you can open up the SQL scripts. Uh, it's not really cheating. I'm giving you these exercises from the book so that you can uh, play around with these joins. But all of the answers are, are kind of there in that download. If you go to the exercises folder and then chapter four, you can open up the SQL. What I'd like for you to do is understand what this is doing uh, because on the test next week you'll have to write these um, where there's there's not already answers uh, so make sure that you're not just turning these in that you're actually running it uh, but when I execute this I get this information and what I'm getting is all of the data so this select star means all the data from the vendors table so here from this vendors table and from the invoices table here's my invoices table and the join is on that vendors vendor ID and the invoices vendor ID because I have a foreign key relationship between vendors and invoices on this invoice ID in both tables, I will get the record that is related to invoices and vendors so that I won't have uh, any duplicates. I will just have all of the data that's related together. So I can't do that if there's no enforced relationship. I, I can't join it on that on that value. I can however change this query and let's say that I want to get all of the records from these tables but only where the uh, invoice total is greater than uh, 1000. So here I have my join on the table relationship but then I can also have a WHERE clause. So let's say WHERE this invoices invoice total and this is kind of nice because I get the uh, help from SQL Server Management Studio. So it reminds me what the column names are and the table names. So now I'm going to run this again. And here it tells me I have 27 rows. So then if I just want to look at a couple values, let's say I don't want all of this information. Let's say I just want vendor name. I'm going to get rid of the star and I'm going to put in table name dot column name, oops, vendors. Let's do vendor name. And invoices, oops. Invoice total. and invoices say invoice number I'm gonna run that Oops. So then I have the same information I still have 27 rows I just have three of the columns instead of all of the columns so then I get the vendor name invoice total and invoice number I might only want uh, a, you know, I, I can add as many where clauses. I can do and something else. Um, so let's just look for a specific vendor. So where invoices, invoice total is greater than a thousand. And let's see, vendor, that vendor name. Oops equal to 
and I need to put this in single quotes because this isn't a number. This is a var car. Let's say pole star. And this has to be the correct case as well. Let's run that. And there we go. I only have one record now. Um, so, so please explore these joins. Uh, take a look at the table. Make sure you understand the foreign key relationships and how that relates to joins. And then also add in the where clauses to limit the data and see uh, what kind of results that you get. Um, and, and really explore this chapter because this is one of the uh, most challenging uh, concepts. And if you understand it with just two tables and really understand it, then you can apply it to multiple tables. So I can do uh, multiple joins to get information from all of these tables. But if you don't understand just two tables, it's very hard to uh, scale that up and understand how to get data from all of these tables. So that should be your goal for this week. And once you get an understanding there, then we'll have a, a test next week, your, um, your major test. And we'll be doing um, a lot of select statements and a lot of joins in that test. Thank you very much for watching and have a great week.